Today on Player Base, we're going to talk about being on the water live in Dead Lore. And the reason for that is because we're going to talk about how to set player expectations. Hey, everybody, I'm GR. This is Player Base, which is a channel dedicated to the study of the dynamics of play, which is ludology. And this video and the next few videos are dedicated to Duke Quakem due to uh, back and forth that we had in the comments right over here, where he mentioned that what he really liked in that video was my use of a phrase that I've, I've used several times, which is some people like to play their character and some people like to play their character sheet. Now, I actually used that in other videos. In fact, I used it in this one on how to read a character sheet. And the thing about that is that you have to understand that when people say they like playing Dungeons and Dragons or they like playing role-playing games, it is equivalent to saying, I like being on the water. Now, that could mean that you like sitting on a towel at the beach reading trashy romance novels. It could mean that you are dedicated to getting into a bathosphere and plunging into the depths of the Marinara Trench. It could mean that you're a sport bass fisherman. It could mean that you're a taller fisherman. It could mean that you're a sea pirate. It could mean that you're a surfer. And how you get to knowing what that means for somebody is by setting up a series of expectations that they can interact with. And that is where live and dead lore comes into play. Now, a few, I, I don't even remember if I mentioned this in videos before, but like there's a really great um, documentary about marketing where they explain how people don't often know what they want or how to articulate it, which is really what this channel is about because while I may not always have the most agreeable perspective, my ability to articulate an idea is relatively effective in ways that people find useful, and that's why I'm providing that service to you for your use. In this particular instance, when people are talking about uh, wanting to articulate their desires, they don't often have the vocabulary for it or the connection for it or even necessarily uh, the ownership of it. That's really what a lot of giving people permission at the table is about. That's why speaking in character, everybody doing it in a round robin format really engages people's sense of permissivity because the group accepts this action because everyone's doing it. It's a very powerful psychological tool. It's very simple. Don't discount it. And the reason that's important is because a lot of the things that we're discussing, you know, they don't necessarily come up all the time, and even when they do, people don't have the framework, the syntax, much less the vocabulary, to address them. And when we're talking about desires or preferences, what's really necessary for that, for most people to get a sense of it, is to discuss it or discuss options, right? And that's where dead lore comes into play. So, uh, like, what feels like a lifetime ago, I had... Uh, a, uh, a live podcast with some other DMs uh, where we discussed uh, various topics. And in one of them, we came up with the distinction between live and dead lore. And it's like this. Dead lore is the lore that you give to players or that they have already about the setting and the adventure. Dead lore sets up expectation, tone, very often genre as well. And dead lore is stuff like okay, everybody's going to be uh, like an elf, a dwarf, or a human being in, you know, a, a general sort of Forgotten Realms area or like a genuine Tolkienian uh, sort of 14th century adventure or something even more specific than that. We're all sea pirates or, you know, everybody's in space or this is, uh, this, you know, a game about hyperdimensional, super intelligent colors blue. And, you know, while an RPG about Voodoo Moves would be wonderful, uh, I don't want to get into that tangent right now. Let's get back to why dead lore is important and how you can use it, and also the distinction between dead lore and live lore, which I'll get to in a second. So it, it's dead lore because it's static, right? Everybody knows going into it. It's the edifice that you're walking into. And when you present an idea to another player. Now, you could be the player presenting this idea, or you could be the game master, the dungeon master. It doesn't really matter. What is important is that you express to the other person 
what it is you're looking to do and what it is you're looking for, which is why in the How to Make a Character video, we start out with that. And, and that's exactly why that's so important, because if you're having trouble really accessing uh, the ownership or the vocabulary and syntax of your desire, or if you're not, just not versed in it enough. Like, you may be very good at telling the different uh, ingredients in, in a food that you eat, but if you've never been to an Indian restaurant before, you don't really know whether you should get the lamb vindaloo or the chicken tikka masala or the, um, uh, or the jad gosh, or even what a samosa is. It comes from Uzbekistan. Okay, so now what? Well, you present a sense of what the adventure is going to be or what the adventure that you're looking for is. You know, I really want to be a caravan guard um, on a perilous trail, or I'm looking to be a, an officious magistrate in um, a hypergalactic empire, or I am a scurrilous and cantankerous dwarf who is trying to get out of the mining business and going into horticulture. You know, whatever it is. That tells somebody what you're looking for. And particularly with fantasy land, um, as Colville talks about a lot, people have uh, a, a priori, even a prelingual understanding of that frame of reference. So everybody has the ability to access, to some degree, what your expectations are because they're somewhat versed in it. You know, they have a certain amount of literacy in that. But science fiction is a little different. You know, people don't necessarily have a collective unconscious about hyperdimensional physics, but that's why you just have to go into further detail. And referencing, you know, referencing material like articles of, uh, of literature or of film and television or video games or like just pictures of cool swords. You know, my Pinterest, when I found it, I just had a rush of dopamine from the bottom of my coccyx all the way up to my pineal gland because I, I was like, you mean you can now collect all the cool sword pictures online? And I did that for like three hours. Oh my God. And then I had, you know, different sections for different swords. You get the idea. The other thing is you will also get a sense of what someone is looking for based upon how relatively specificitous they are. For instance, if you say, I want to do something with swords, that's different than saying, I'm looking for a sword and sandal type adventure or I'm looking to do something with um, long swords and, uh, and partisans, not small swords or rapiers. It's too far uh, into the developmental period for me. Now, all of those are shibboleths, but they're reverse shibboleths too, because if you don't know what that person is talking about, you know that they're probably not talking about something that you have either an interest in or most likely you're not conversant in it. And so then you ask them to uh, go into further detail. So what you're going to do with this, the dead lore, is you're going to set up in a conversation at the table, on the phone, over instant messenger, whatever you need to do, you know, um, this is a session zero, session ne negative imaginary numbers actually. Hey, this is what I'm looking to do. The first thing you do is you say, this is the kind of thing I wanna do. We're in a bathysphere, we're on the beach, we're on a pirate boat, we're doing sport fishing. You set up that expectation. And when you set up that expectation, there'll be information in there about what the, so the tone and the setting for the slip is going to be. And for live lore, uh, we're gonna talk about that tomorrow. So I'm player base and this is GR.